Hi, you clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday. Over here in the Atlantic, we have a couple of things to watch. First big one is Hurricane Rena over here, and we're also going to discuss 97L briefly. But at the end here, we're going to talk about Rena first. And before we even zoom in on this storm, just take a look at what's going on. We can see the outflow, the cirrus clouds moving out, poleward, great poleward outflow channel. And now we're even starting to develop this equatorward outflow channel to the south here as these cirrus clouds push out in all directions. Very beautiful outflow pattern around Rena right now and she is in a very favorable upper level environment which is supporting intensification. Waters are 29 to 30 degrees Celsius in the Northwest Caribbean. The highest ocean heat content that we currently have in the Atlantic and that we ever have in the Atlantic is always in this area and this is where storms can really wind up. Now if we zoom in on Rena here we can see that since yesterday she has definitely become a much stronger storm. She is now a solid hurricane category 2 now. We can see this eye popping out now in the visible imagery. And uh, what we talked about yesterday, that the concern with this storm, although the intensity forecast was rather conservative yesterday, the caveat was that she's got a very tight core. And uh, small storms like this can ramp up in a hurry and feed back in the Western Caribbean if she can fight off the dry air. And we talked about yesterday being the key to see how she would perform with all the dry air off to the west. And she performed, she passed with flying colors, and she did actually feed back and strengthen. So now she is already a Category 2, and we're likely to see a Category 3 peak out of her. It's even possible she can make a weak Category 4, but a strong 3 week 4 could be the highest that she possibly gets here. Her overall movement right now is west-northwest, even though the eye is wobbling around as always, but she has a very nice core. You can see these thunderstorms that keep popping up over and over again on the western eye wall here. This is a very strong eye wall that is trying to close off here. It's still a little bit open to the east, which the recon has been reporting. And they just got in there and found a central pressure of 970 millibars. That's only down 4 millibars from the last time a plane was in there several hours ago. So it is still falling. Or excuse me, it's 972 millibars now, not 970. 972, that's down 2 millibars from several hours ago. So her strengthening has slowed for the moment, but it, she should continue gradually strengthening given the environment that she has to work with right now. Now here's the NHC forecast track from this morning taking Rena as a major hurricane up towards Cancun and I agree with this track in the short term. Northeast Yucatan is going to get the brunt of this storm. People vacationing there are going to be in for a rude surprise as this comes roaring through and they will get the very worst of this. And then the NHC takes it and shunts it off east or even east-southeast into Cuba here following the pack of models that has Rena weakening rapidly and then curling back down into the Northwest Caribbean. The reason they do that is if we think about what's going to be happening, we're going to have a front diving into the northern Gulf of Mexico. And when these fronts dive into the subtropics, the mid-level flow is approximately parallel to the front. So the mid-level flow is west-southwest in here. If Rena is a very deep system, she will tend to follow this mid-level flow and get pulled directly across South Florida and on out to the east-northeast. If, however, she is weakening rapidly or is a weaker system as some of the models have shown then the northerly winds coming in behind the front tend to push her back and force her back down towards the southeast and die off sort of near the western Cuba area. This kind of happened to Paula last year. She came up like this very similar to Rena and then kind of died off like this as the low level center took off to the east southeast over Cuba and she was pushed away. The problem here is that some of these models are not seeing Rena as strong as she actually is. In fact, even the high resolution NAM models and European models are still showing her initialized above 1000 millibars central pressure, which is not correct here. However, she is a very small system, a very compact one. This here is the recon data from the latest pass through the eye that I collected and threw into Excel. This is the geopotential height at their flight level, which is about 696 millibars for all practical purposes it's the 700 millibar level that's 10,000 feet up and it, it's the height in meters and you can see as we go down into the eye here it tanks and this is the presentation you see with the hurricanes they tank in here some some storms the larger ones will have a more gradual slope down and then they'll tank and then they'll come up and then they'll have a more gradual slope out and if you take the area under these two curves there's going to be less mass under a larger storm because the pressure field is more expansive 
arena is extremely tight and only has the low pressure right there at the eye and then almost nothing. Even out here, there's a buoy up here to the north of the storm that's still at 1,014 millibars right now, and that's pretty high for still being out in the middle of the spiral bands. In other words, this is a very small area of low pressure, a very intense one, a very tight one, which is why she's intensifying so much, but it's also very small. So it's hard for the models to see. It also means that the front isn't going to want to absorb it quite as much. But if we look at what we're going to be dealing with, this is the GFS out today. Let's see, this is 60 hours out on the 12Z GFS. Here is Rena showing up nicely at the 500 millibar level just north of the Yucatan Channel. Now look at what we have here. We have a short wave coming across the southern United States, and this is propagating eastward, and we have this ridge out to the east of the Bahamas. Now, given this setup, it makes perfect sense to me that this is just going to follow the flow across Florida like this, across South Florida and the northern Bahamas and on out. I mean, we have the ridge in here. It's already directly west or even north of the western axis of this ridge. And then we have a vorticity maximum coming directly along I-20 here across the south. There's no way this is going to be forced back to the south. I think it's going to come across South Florida as this pattern evolves. And you can see that by 84 hours, the GFS brings it into South Florida. It will be weakening because this just this jet stream is screaming across here and it will be shearing the system so she will be weakening coming in but she could still be a strong tropical storm to perhaps a weak category one worst case scenario if she moves fast enough in here but she's not going to be that bad of a storm for Florida but she will be something to be aware of and certainly warnings will likely have to be posted for her and a lot will also depend on how much she interacts with the northeastern Yucatan but I believe this path makes perfect sense and the GFS and the HWRF this is another one that shows a general path that I like pretty well here goes up takes a swipe at Cancun and then you can see the wind speeds in the colors here weakening as it approaches south Florida and we're down to strong tropical storm strength by the time landfall occurs southeast of Naples so this will be what we're probably looking at here and so Cuba, Florida, the Bahamas and especially the Cancun region of the Northeast Yucatan need to keep a close eye on Rena right now and she she's strengthening she has an eye she could be a strong three to week four at her peak here before she moves towards Cancun so this is a big deal for these folks she's a small system hurricane force winds only out a couple dozen miles but she could be devastating as she moves ashore by Thursday morning. Thursday morning, she'll probably be moving ashore. All right, and we have Invest 97L that we're also going to be watching in here. There's a tropical wave in the eastern Caribbean, and this is coming westward. This is coming in behind Rena, and if Rena is a strong storm in here, this may find kind of a sweet spot once it gets south of Jamaica, and we might have it. We might have the potential for another tropical depression to try to develop out of this down the road. Kind of hard to say at this point. We'll just keep an eye on this and see if it starts to fire up once it gets to Jamaica's longitude and farther west. This could try to come up and become another storm in the wake of Rena, so we will have to keep an eye on that as well because the upper level environment is pretty favorable with the upper level high over this entire region. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.